Right on the tick. The second, and as it turned out, third movie, they were a lot of fun to work on, like creating that whole future world. Just in terms of sets and props and effects, they were enormously bigger and more expensive movies than the first one. And I think there were maybe 27 people in the art department for number two and three. And we were all thinking about crazy things for the future. I had some specific assignments, like Doc Brown is supposed to have an amphibious flying van. So I did a bunch of sketches for that. Unfortunately, it got written out. And I nursed an idea that John Bell had for this beautiful flying Citroen taxi uh, through to completion. I made working drawings and bid it out and then worked with the shop to get it done. <laughs> I was a resource available for anyone who wanted some crazy thing designed and drawn. He'll be right over here, and then just as he's turning around from that, we'll have this uh, hologram of uh, Jaws come out and try to bite him. It made me feel like I wasn't given a, a movie assignment, but I was given an experience to actually go on those journeys to those places. And because there was something already that was very strong about Hill Valley as presented in the first movie, I could build upon that as a production designer and then with the, all the input that Bob and Bob could give me to actually feel free to project myself into the future. The future. In the era of Blade Runner and, and Brazil and all of that, to project ourselves from the 80s to a place where there was a balance with nature and the park and the pond and then all these sort of free-form architectural styles that I could bring to bear into the square, I found that I was able to kind of see it as an optimistic look forward into a world that, that I hoped would be. 